Hey guys, it's Mama Mel. Welcome back to my kitchen. For all my returning viewers, I want to let you know right off the top, this video is in collaboration with my friend Fallon from Moss Family TV. I'll have her video and her channel linked in my description box for you to check her out today. Fallon is a wonderful cook and an even better person. She and her husband Titus have five children and I feel like I'm part of the family. I've watched her channel for so long. She does a daily vlog documenting everyday life at her home. She is a homeschool mama. She cooks almost every day of the week. I'm sure most of you will have already heard of Moss Family TV, but if not, be sure and check them out. And if you're coming to my channel from Fallon's, I can't say thank you enough. It means more to me than you'll ever know that you've come over to my channel to check out my video. I hope you'll enjoy the meals that I'm bringing you this week. I'm a mom of two girls, 17 and 24 years old, and I've been married to my high school sweetheart for 28 years. So that's who I cook for. I cook what they like, how they like it. And every now and again, I try to sneak something new in on them. I bring food that's just real, family, Southern cooking, and I try to make it as simple and easy as I can. So without further ado, let's get into this week's What's for Dinners. This is a real simple way to start. You're just gonna make a boxed pasta salad according to the directions. You just wanna get that pasta salad fixed up and put in the fridge so it can start marinating. Ain't none of this hard, but there's a lot of moving parts to tonight's meal. You're going to dice up some onions to go into your ground beef that's browning up over there. Then I'm going to show you a little trick for draining grease. I've seen Fallon do this before too, but just in case you've never seen it, I just take a bowl, line it with aluminum foil, and I do it down in the sink because I'm real messy. And then I'm just going to take my meat, and yeah, I'm using that same strainer I used on my pasta salad. It's fine. Going to put all your meat down in there and drain the grease off, and then you'll see it all, all the grease stays in that aluminum foil. And then you can just set it over to the side, and when it hardens up, you can just throw that away, and you don't have a big mess to clean up anywhere. You're going to assemble all this in like a bean pot, something that has a lid to it or a Dutch oven. But you're going to take one of the bigger cans of just plain old pork and beans, going to doctor it up with a few things before we add our meat and onions in. Going to take, I believe it's a cup of ketchup. And I will have all the recipes either typed out or a link to them down in the description box. But it is a cup of ketchup. You're going to take one tablespoon of chili powder and three tablespoons of apple cider vinegar and mix all this in here. This recipe was my aunt's recipe and I always loved this of hers. I even put this in my recipe box my freshman year of high school when I was in home egg. And that's still the little recipe card. I'll pull out and look at it every time that I make it and I think of her. I had a lot of good times at her house with her making um, these cowboy beans. She always had a house full of uh, teenage boys and to feed and they love this and I love it too. And I do put some salt in it and uh, mix all that up. And then once you get that stirred up pretty good, you're going to bring your ground beef and onions over and mix that in real good. And you can make this meatless. I've done that before, but tonight this was sort of going to be our main dish. And then stay tuned because you're going to see some of this stuff show up again in another night's meal. But anyway, once you get it all mixed up, you're just going to put the lid on your pot Put it in a 400 degree oven, set it for an hour, and you don't have to think about it. It does all of its goodness in this little pot right here. Now we're going to put together some fried cornbread, and 
I don't always have buttermilk, so I'm just going to show you how I make a little buttermilk. Take about a cup of milk and just put you a big tablespoon of white vinegar into it and let it set for a little bit. And it'll turn into buttermilk. Tastes just like it. And this is a little different. Usually I make my fried cornbread with just cornmeal and milk and egg. But tonight I've got something a little bit different I've seen. I want to try it. And I've got a little scoop here, but it is a cup of self-rising flour that goes into it. And then you'll take a cup of cornmeal. And then you'll take two teaspoons of baking powder and a little salt, a little sugar. And I saw this and I just wondered how fluffy this fried cornbread would get. And it was very fluffy and good. Um, I don't know if I like it as much as just my regular little ones, but they was very good. So once you get all your dry stirred up, you're just going to put in two eggs and then you're about three-fourths a cup of buttermilk. If you don't have enough milk, you can add a little bit wa more water if you need to. But I just always start on the low side and work my way up. But you're just going to mix this up and then we're just going to sit it aside. And the longer it sits, I believe the fluffier they get too. And then we'll hop over to another project for tonight. We're going to start uh, cutting us up some taters. Got my cast iron skillet over here. Got some butter and oil all hot in there. Throwing my taters in there. Skin and all. That's how we like them. And it's just a whole lot easier not to have to peel them too. I do try to dry them off good. I've got, see I've got a paper towel in my bowl. and um, That just helps with grease jumping out and getting you. And I just always season mine up with salt and pepper and garlic powder and some onion powder. And I did throw some onions in that too. And you always want to get your taters started early because they just take a while to cook. We like ours pretty crispy. This night I got them a little bit extra crispy. Some parts maybe even a little bit burnt. But they wasn't nobody complained. And I've got a nice big can of those uh, seasoned collards back there. Those Margaret Holmes seasoned greens back there. Um, she makes them so much better than I ever could. And we eat them just about with something every week. So now I've got my cast iron griddle over here. And I'm getting a little oil and butter um, on it. And when it gets good and hot, you're just going to pour your, pour your cornbread batter in there. Just like you would a pancake. Just a few minutes each side is all it takes. And then in between each batch of them, um, this cast iron griddle, I have a hard time. I'll, seems like, not have it heated and then it'll get hot all of a sudden. So I always go back and wipe off uh, that old residual butter because you don't want, you know, burnt butter on your fried cornbread. But they cook up quick and easy and they're good just to eat. They're good to make a fried potato sandwich out of them. Put it in between two of them. It's good to have for dessert, just with a little bit of syrup on them. Um, you just can't beat a good old piece of fried cornbread. Hoe cakes is what some people call them. My mama always called it fried cornbread. So here they come, and look how big them things got. They were big and fluffy. They just looked like big fluffy pancakes. But they was good. I have to show you the inside of one, and I, I might have eaten that one while I was finishing dinner. Who knows? But there's cowboy beans coming out of the oven. You see how nice and bubbly they are. And I just let them sit there a few minutes, and then I'll... You know, take that lid off and stir them up. Like I said, this is a great side dish. And this night, we just ate it as the main dish. You can make them vegetarian. You can just do anything you want to with them. If you like a bunch of green peppers, that'd probably be good in here. But 
we just like them like that so here's our plates we've got those good greens fried potatoes and fried cornbread cowboy beans and that old boxed pasta salad which is so good so now on our next night you're gonna see our old friend pasta salad back out it's not all gone but here's just some ways that I doctor this up and make this stretch just a little bit longer uh, pretty self-explanatory you can see what all I'm cutting up and throwing in um, it's always me and my husband and I've got a teenager and a young adult here at home too um, but they ain't always all here to eat so I try to make like enough for everybody and sometimes we'll have leftovers sometimes not but here's what I just throw in to stretch this out another night I've had cucumbers and broccoli onions if you had some little uh, grape tomatoes they'd be good in this carrots you can throw anything in there and then I'll squeeze a little bit of ranch dressing this was the BLT uh, brand of this pasta salad so I put some more bacon in there for it and some cheese and um, forgot sometimes I'll throw cheddar cheese in here and um, they make one that's bacon and ranch and it's real good too they're all good I've had a lot of different variations and instead of putting more mayonnaise in it this night I'm gonna throw in some ranch dressing give it a little extra twang mix it up stick it back in the fridge and we'll have that as another side later and this is my friend Nora's recipe for burgers she showed me how to put these together with these three ingredients one time when we was camping and I'm hooked that steak sauce is like Walmart's brand of Heinz 57 and then you got like seasoning salt and the Worcestershire however you say that sauce and I've got about a pound maybe a little over a pound of meat here you just sprinkle all that on there and just get it all mixed in thoroughly and my husband he's got one of those blackstone uh, cast iron flat grills outside but he was just smack wore out this night and he did not even feel like doing these burgers outside and I'm not real good on that thing yet I said I think no deal I'll just do them inside on my cast iron skillets and they worked out perfectly but the way we do smash burgers you're just gonna ball them up and then when you set them on that hot cast iron I've got a big heavy cast iron bacon press and you see I just take some wax paper and lay it on top of those uh, little balls of meat and you just press it down as hard as you can and it will just sear the best crust on these hamburgers and it doesn't take them no time to cook up because you are flattening them just as flat as you can get them now the only problem I run into this night was my big bacon press was wider than my other cast iron skillet with the sides on it so I couldn't get those <laughs> pressed down real good I had to really work at it getting it down in there but I like the way my cast iron with the sides cooks better so you'll see me I move these burgers around and back and forth a couple different times to get them done like I wanted them but the main thing with the smash burger is to smash it on a hot cast iron griddle or skillet to get that sear on it and they are so good You can just see how nice and flat they've got so there's those two over there coming out I put a little bit of cheese on them and then I'm gonna transfer these three that's on this griddle over there to my other cast iron it's a different brand than what this griddle is and I don't know if it's just a better quality or if it's just been used more and it's seasoned up better but it just seems to be able to control the heat better in it so I finished them off over on that side and you'll have a nice greasy stovetop to clean up when you get done but it is well worth the trouble so here's our old friend cowboy beans he come back out for this meal and pasta salad and there's those burgers and I was out of lettuce that night and that's my favorite part of a hamburger is that cold iceberg lettuce but it was still good had some onion on that couldn't beat it 
And if my husband had made them outside, I wouldn't even had to cook nothing. And I just wanted to show you, I pulled that pasta salad out for another meal when we just had a frozen pizza. Now I've got a new recipe I'd never tried before and it was called spinach cream cheese chicken casserole. First thing you do is make like a little rub or marinade. You take about a teaspoon of olive oil, two or three cloves of garlic, and then you're going to take about a half a teaspoon of Italian seasoning, about half a teaspoon of pepper, and a teaspoon of salt. And you're just going to mix all this up in a bag, and it's not going to be like a full-on marinade where everything's just covered and saturated, but it's going to be more like a rub. And uh, it doesn't have to sit very long to pick up these flavors, and it sticks to the chicken real good. So I just kind of mix it all up with my hands, put all, and I'm using chicken tenders instead of breast. That was what I had. Uh, let it set in there on the counter while you wilt you some spinach. And I think I started out with a couple of handfuls, and I just kept adding the spinach to this because you will just be surprised how long. <laughs> far down spinach wilts but there's only two of us that really like the spinach so that was fine so you pull out your chicken out of your marinade and put it all in a greased casserole dish and then you take some cream cheese and I had softened this up real good so and stirred it around so that I could spread it across all of this chicken and then I put spinach on about half of this that me and one of my daughters we wanted spinach on ours so I doctored ours up real good and then you come back over that with some mozzarella cheese and everybody gets mozzarella and then you're going to put that down in the oven for about 20 to 30 minutes and I believe that's 400 degree oven I will double check for you and put that down in the description box I made this cornbread casserole over the weekend and if you're interested in that come back Thursday I'm gonna have a special video with three different summer salads that cornbread casserole was wonderful. It's different than any I've ever eaten before. And then I could not do a what's for dinner with Fallon Moss without having a dessert. So I've got a strawberry cheesecake lush for you. The crest of this cheesecake is vanilla sandwich crackers. And I had to do this in about three rounds in my little food processor. Grind them up till they're just, you know, pretty crumbly like this. And then you're going to add in about six tablespoons of melted butter and mix all that together the best you can. And then put it down in like a uh, 9 by 13 greased pan. And you're going to smush it out to make your crust. And I was getting ready to use my hands and I remembered seeing my friend Valerie from the Hargett Life use a little back of her, her measuring cups to press down her crust. So I tried that and that worked real good. So once you get that done, you're going to put that in the fridge for just a little bit to get nice and cool. Then you start slicing up those strawberries. And while everything is cool in there, you're going to take you a block of cream cheese this is for your for your first layer and you're gonna uh, take that softened cream cheese and you're gonna beat it up then you're gonna add in a cup of powdered sugar get it nice and smooth then you're gonna take a cup of Cool Whip if you've got one of the small like eight ounce containers I believe it is it's half of that then you're going to spread all of that over that cooled crust. Then we're going to make another layer. Take two of these small boxes of the cheesecake instant pudding. And then you're going to mix in three cups of cold milk with that. Get that mixed up real good. 
and then you're going to add in the other half of that container of Cool Whip, another cup. That's going to make you another layer to go on top of that cream cheese with this cheesecake flavored pudding. You want to make sure all that Cool Whip is mixed in pretty good. And once you get that all spread out nice, you're going to do a big layer of strawberries. And if I had this to do again, I might have done my strawberries in between these two layers because the last thing you do is top it with a whole nother carton of Cool Whip. And that's it all put together and I had another carton of strawberries so I just decorated it up nice. And then here is my sweet little mama serving this up on Sunday dinner. I love seeing her little hands in here. That makes me feel good. This recipe was wonderful. It was so cool and refreshing and delicious. Friends, thank you so much for watching. And if you're here from Fallon's channel, I hope you've had a good time today. I've enjoyed having you. I hope you'll stick around for more. And to everybody, until the next time I see you, I send you love from my kitchen.